Hi guys, welcome back to Creep Designs by Twitch. I am Twitch. Today I am working on something that's kind of like a... It's a case of... I've got other things I'm waiting on to do a small project before I move on to other things. A bigger project. Um, and I don't like waiting. So I'm going to work on this piece. That I'll show you in a second. Um, while I wait... To be able to work on the other thing before I work on the bigger thing. It makes sense. So this is the piece that I'm going to be working on today. It's a fairly cheaply made set of drawers. Um, it's kind of rickety. Um, the back of it is just cheap stuff. Uh, doesn't have metal runners it's got these ones these little doodads in the side which aren't in the best condition um, and uh, let's get around here the top drawer or one of the drawers is missing the base um, if these were a better quality set of drawers I would go to the effort of just replacing the base but the other problem is if I take this out um, part of the base is missing and if it was wood it'd be worth fixing but it is just MDF crap so what I'm going to be doing actually you know what I'm not going to tell you exactly what I'm doing because you can just wait and see all right so Because it is such a poor quality piece of furniture, I don't really want to put a whole week's worth of effort into it and try and sell it for, you know, two or $300 because I wouldn't feel comfortable putting that kind of price tag on something where it's a cheap piece, but I've tried to make it look expensive. I don't really want to do things that way. That's not how I work. So I'm going to do this as quick as I can and get it done, which will get it out of my workshop. As you can see, I do not, I'm running out of space here. And it will also put some much needed funds in my pocket if I can sell it quickly, if I put it at a low price. And you guys get a video out of it. So there's that. Alright. Let's get started. As always, getting stuck into it by removing anything that's not staying. Alright, now while I do usually like to hold on to everything and keep everything, I have an abundance of little wooden knobs like these. Um, so I don't really need to keep them, so I'm just going to throw these out rather than accumulating even more of them and never using them. But I do keep these because you'd be surprised how often spares of these come in handy because sometimes knobs either don't come with the screws for whatever reason or the screws that you have for certain knobs might be too short or too long and these ones might just be the right length. So keeping those, getting rid of those. So these little plugs that I popped out earlier, these are there to cover up where the screws go in to hold this piece together. I was planning on sanding these smooth so it was like they were never there, but you know what? They're not hurting anyone, so they got to stay. This wobbly MDF crappy old back though had to go.
whilst this broken drawer will no longer serve as a drawer, I will be dismantling the front of it to reuse some of these parts. Alright, if you haven't guessed it already, I'm turning the bottom part into a shelf. We're looking at the back of it right now and I would have shown um, how I put this together but it's pretty straightforward. Um, so I wanted more support on the sides so that I didn't have to screw into the side part here and risk punching through on the other side. Um, so I've just used offcuts from the drawer front and the parts that were on the side here to put the supports in so I'll just attach them put them in with glue and then um, put a screw in on either end um, oh now we're looking at the front now alright so screws in the back there and I countersunk these ones and put the screws in and chuck some putty over the top and just a couple of screws in on either side and then I'll cut a piece of something. I have no idea what I'm going to use to put on there because I don't have any plywood or anything laying around. So I'll have to work that out. But yeah. So whilst that's all drying, I'm going to work on the top, which I'm going to sand. Uh, but I pretty sure I can remove the top so I'm going to do that to make my life easier. So using my Cartamelli PrepMate 2 orbital sander I started off with 80 grit sandpaper. When I'm starting with 80 grit sandpaper, I don't like to go all the way down to bare wood. I try to just take off the bulk of it and then I swap to 120 and then up to 240. I go up through the grits and I find doing it this way I'm less likely to end up with swell patterns. And then I just go around all the edges with a piece of 240 grit sandpaper just to soften the edges a bit. I'm using Cartamelli washed away stain in the color Coffs Jetty. Don't forget you can find any products I use in this video in the description below. So my favorite way to apply this stain is to brush it on in sections and then wipe off the excess. The warmer it is the faster you will have to work and it is starting to warm up in this shed so I am working quicker. When it comes to doing it this way when I'm wiping it back, I kind of rub the edges of each section a bit so that I don't end up with harsh lines, harsh edges in my stain job. After letting the stain dry completely, I went over it and smooth sanded it with 240 grit sandpaper and then just to make sure that I didn't reveal any raw timber from smooth sanding it, I am just uh, thinning down some of the same stain and going to go over it again with a thin coat. The reason I'm watering it down is because it is quite opaque already and I don't want to make it more opaque and hide too much of that. Um, and hide too much of that wood grain. I'll get there. I've only had one coffee. Before I start working on installing the shelf in the base of this dress dresser, I'm just going through and sanding 
and taking care of anything that might be underneath or might get in the way. Alright, so in case you haven't worked it out, this stuff that I've used is VJ panel that was left over from my mum's renovations. Um, and it's the stuff that's made for like wet areas and whatever. Um, the underside of this is like all fluffy and I don't really want to leave it like that even though it's going to be underneath. Um, so I'm going to seal it. But I don't have a lot of clear coat left, and I, so I don't want to waste it on this. And I don't really want to waste any other of my good paint on it either. I've got like not much left of some um, aqua enamel here. And I also don't want to dirty a brush just to do this. So I'm literally just going to like rag it on. So yeah, don't judge me. It'll work. So I wasn't super happy with this exposed edge of the way it was, um, but I've got this piece of trim left over from when I built my mum's bench seat. Uh, so I'm just going to cut that to length and glue it in. So the side walls on this dresser had come unstuck from the drawer runners and were kind of flapping in the breeze a bit. So I just shoved some glue in there and stapled them back into the drawer runners. Because, you know, no one likes flappy drawer sides. <laughs> So the edge of the trim piece that I added in was sticking out a bit, so I just sanded it flush with the front.
Now it's time to replace the back on this piece and I've stolen this off the back of a pine hutch that I'm going to be doing eventually. This piece is coming off the hutch because it's not in the best condition so I'm going to replace it on that and I figured I may as well make use of this on this cheap piece instead of just putting it in the rubbish. Alright, so now I'm finally ready to start painting. I'm going in first with Cartamilli Boutique Primer and Adhesive Bond. I don't really prime a lot of the pieces that I work on, but I feel like this piece needed it. So I did two coats of primer and then I went over it with 400 grit sandpaper. I should also include, and you can probably tell by the look of this piece, but I did scuff sand it and clean it and all of that. Okay, so I had a bit of a hard time choosing a colour for this. I wanted to go something neutral, that would be easy to sell, but then I was like, mm, I don't know, that looks a little bit too close to Coffs Jetty. Um, so then I was like, oh, but this looks so good with Coffs Jetty. So I asked opinions on Facebook and Instagram and you guys came through and I tallied it up and everyone wants to go well, the majority wants to go with um, cookies. So, sorry for those that wanted to see Sweet 16, we're going with cookies. So I was originally planning on painting the outside just in straight cookies and the inside part in white or um, gyra snow. Um, but I just wasn't feeling it. So I'm painting the inside with straight cookies. So I'll do two coats of cookies on the inside and then go from there. So for the external parts of the drawers, I'm using cookie still, but I'm lightening it with gyra snow. I was planning on trying to keep track of my measurements for you guys, even just roughly, but I ended up started off using way too much cookies and it wasn't quite light enough for my plan. Uh, so I ended up having to dump a lot of this into another container and then adding more gyra snow, but I got there. At a guess, I'd probably say this is a mix of two parts gyro snow and one part cookies. My hands are not steady enough to do this without tape.
And here she is. An example of what can be done with a broken drawer. There's absolutely no need for her to end up in the rubbish and she'll live to see another day. And honestly, the whole time I was working on this, I was expecting to hate it when it was finished. But as soon as I started putting the staging props on and taking photos, I just fell in love with it. It's not my usual style, but I love it. Please let me know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to check the description for all products used and make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can stay up to date with new videos and new challenges coming soon. See you next time and thanks for watching.